Drowning man update. We got three quarters of an inch of rain. Travel is impossible. And there's about 70,000 people stranded on a barren lake bed. But fortunately, burners are badass and brought all the supplies we need. Or most of us. We got people who came by bus camped on the edge of the city. They're in pop-up tents and at risk of getting hypothermia. But we don't need outside help. We're gonna bind together, get radically self-reliant, dry out the furniture, and keep the party going. The alternative is to fall into despair, roll over, and die. And we all have a choice in how we're gonna handle this. So everyone open up your Starlink satellites so people can communicate with their families. Make an expedition to the edge of the city city with food and water. And don't fight anybody because we're all in this together. Bury those negative thoughts and gratitude for your life because a couple people didn't make it last night. And know that we're all going to clean up this mess and get out of here. This is the hand we were dealt this year and together we're going to get through it. These, <laughs> these people are so screwed. And the sad part is that most of them don't even realize it yet. Like the reality and the realization has not kicked in yet. I know that this guy made this little video to instill confidence in people that they got everything under control and that they're going to be okay. But all he really showed was that they managed to rip up clothing and carpets and make makeshift walkways through the mud. And you know, unless you're able to eat ripped up clothes and drink ripped up carpets, once that food and water runs out, these people are screwed. And listen, I know it's early on. Don't ask me why these people did not come prepared. But a lot of them are already reporting that they already ran out of food and water. And we are really early on in this situation. It is estimated right now that they won't be able to leave until Thursday. Probably later than that, though, because right now, as we speak, they are getting hit with a huge storm. They're going to be getting hit with a lot more rain. The flooding is going to get even worse. But did you all catch on to what he said right there at the end? He kind of casually said that, oh, we lost a couple of people last night, implying that a couple of people already died at the Burning Man Festival. Now, we know for a fact that there has been one death confirmed, right? But this guy says a couple of people died. Does he know something that we don't? Personally, I think that there's probably going to be more stuff going on here than what we will hear about on the outside. I do expect that there may be more deaths, but right now there's only one confirmed death. Yet he says a couple of people died last night. But this is where things get really weird. And this is when you have to start reading between the lines. You got to pay attention to how things are worded. All of these articles, they're not saying that, oh, one person died at the Burning Man Festival. They're not saying one person dead at the Burning Man Festival. They're all saying one person confirmed dead. Pay attention to the word confirmed. Maybe there's a reason why they keep using that word. Oh, there's one confirmed death. There's one death that we can confirm, but maybe possibly there's more. So I think that maybe if you pay attention to the wording of things, that maybe when you see these headlines, one confirmed death, Maybe they're using the word confirmed because there's already reports or talks of other deaths, but maybe they can't confirm that because we know law enforcement, help, paramedics, no one can make it to the area. So I also already pointed out that I find it weird that they claim that the one confirmed death is already under investigation. I'm trying to figure out who in the heck is investigating this death if investigators can't even make it to the area. But yeah, that dude slipped up and he said that we lost a couple of people already. So obviously he he's hearing something out there that there may be more than one person dead at this point. Hopefully that's not the case, but I find it very interesting that apparently on the ground, there's talks of more deaths than just one and then when I look at how they're wording these articles and the, the basically the use of the word confirmed, I think that that says a lot because it kind of, in a way, implies that there may be other deaths, but those aren't confirmed. 
Maybe some of you all will think that I'm reading too much into things, but I'm telling you right now, as someone that covers stories for a living, you got to pay attention to how things are worded. But I want to roll this clip so you can hear from someone who's on the ground out there in the middle of all of this madness, and then I'll be right back with more thoughts. So we're okay. I think that the news is saying that it's pretty bad out here. It is. Um, there's mud. You can't really walk or drive. Um, we have Wi-Fi for a moment. So I'm posting this. This is how Peggy and I look right now. Yep, no shoes because it's like really hard to walk with shoes. My boots are like five inches and then the mud became five inches. So I was kind of on stilts. Um, but yeah, as part of this update, we are not allowed out of the playa. The gates are locked. Um, but we're okay. We, we're okay. We have enough tuna for a week. So we're okay. Um, but there's a chance that Sunday is worse. Okay, look, I'm sorry, but how could anyone stuck in this type of situation just nonchalantly mention that, oh, they locked the gates and the fences. They're not letting us leave. What? You see what I mean when I say that the realization has not kicked in for these people yet? Like, this shows you the type of people that we're all surrounded by. We're surrounded by sheep who are ready to be led to the slaughter. You just casually mention, yeah, you know, they're not letting us leave. They're forcing us to stay here and they locked the fences and the gate like, and you don't question that at all. How could you be out there and not question what's going on? Why in the hell is the government telling you that you can't leave? They're shutting down flights. They shut down the city. They shut down neighboring towns and now... They're locking fences and gates to ensure that even if by some miracle you do manage to make it out the mud, that you can't leave? And y'all are okay with this? Oh, but don't worry, we got tuna and here's my friend in, in a jacket barefoot walking on 70,000 piles of human feces, but we're okay because we got tuna. Don't get me wrong, I'm glad they got tuna. I'm glad that they're staying positive. You should always stay positive in any situation. But let's get real here, folks. I hope they have enough food and water to last for however long they're going to be out there. Judging by the storm that's about to hit them right now, they're going to be out there for even longer than they expected. But how can you be okay with, oh yeah, they, they, they're forcing us to stay here and they're closing the fences, they're locking the gates, what? That type of stuff does not fly with me. I would be paranoid. I would have already I would have already gathered a group of renegade rebels on some Mad Max type shit and we would be coming up with plans, looking over scenarios, trying to figure out the proper response to whatever situation arises because it's one thing to be trapped in the mud, it's another thing when you got the government locking fences and telling you that you can't leave. But let me know how you would react to the situation down in the comments below. While you're down there, hit the thumbs up, hit that subscribe, ring that notification bell, and I'll talk to you all very soon in the next video.